नमस्कार डियर डेबोटीज एंड फ्रेंड्स सर टुडे इज द वेंसडे एंड वी विल बी रीडिंग फ्रॉम द गॉस्पल ऑफ श्री राम कृष्ण ट्रांसलेटेड बाय स्वामिनी खिलानंद जी लेट एस बिगिन तब कथामृतम तप्त जीवनम कवि विरीड़ कलमशापहम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती ए भूरिदा जना नव वी वेर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक द विजय कृष्ण गोस्वामी ही आक्स द क्वेश्चन टू भगवान श्री राम कृष्ण एंड श्री राम कृष्ण गिविंग द रिप्लाई human mind always try to understand the truth anything suppose you have given him a something to eat and the moment after tasting it will feel oh so tasty immediately may mainly they will ask what is the recipe what are the recipes is so tasty can we prepare it in our home they like to know the truth if we see that in everything we like because that is the nature when the mind is focused on the external world of this phenomena this search is science the searching is the basic of human mind for everything we like to know and like to know the root like to know the truth but when that search the focused on the external world it's called the science and the same focus the same mind when focused in the internal world that is called spirituality the science and spirituality science searching for the external world trying to know why it is happening and all the through the analytical way and when we turn the mind internally why the mind is behaving like this why all people are not same why the characters are different so so many questions are there and particularly as because we do not know what is going to happen in the next moment so we are curious to know about the future and when it is the future naturally the past so the past the future the present all these searches inside that is called spirituality and through this search a group of people long back in india they reached to a truth they discovered the truth that revelation was there they discovered if we say as if something was there so they went and found it is not like that they never invented also the combination of something and then something new has come not like that just just revealed we should use this word it was revealed to them it was already there then they were going on removing whatever it was there on the top of it so they removed they discovered it was already and that is called the oneness Now, spirituality four different ways have been accepted as a valid systems and they are based on the four different psychological mood of the human active then the loving then the concentrative uh, contemplative and analytical so these are the four moods are there in every human mind so when they are active it's called karma karma yoga why yoga but through karma through activity through action <coughs> it is taking me to the truth and i am becoming united with the truth the so karma yoga through activity then comes the loving way bhakti devotion the emotion and the love that already we are having when we use that path all that emotion mainly 
to reach to the truth the same that is called bhakti yoga devotional path then comes the contemplativeness withdrawing the senses uh, all from the sense organs we are withdrawing the senses from the sense organs and focusing the mind on a consciousness and that is called the dhyana dhyana marga or yoga marga and finally the analytical way analyzing understanding why this why not that and slowly slowly there also the broadly these four are sometimes known as the two bhakti yoga and gyana yoga why because the activity and the contemplativeness or the concentration that is present in both in devotion and also in the path of knowledge so bhakti yoga and gyana yoga gyana means the knowledge path of understanding and bhakti path of devotion that it goes but there is a notion a very strong the people they always feel the devotion and the path of discrimination are completely different it cannot be together the devotion and the path of contemplation friends those who are little philosophical and they may also uh, put this question whether the activity or the karma is present as i said in both the paths how the karma and the gyana can be together because the sankaracharya he has said gyana karma samuchaya asambhava the gyana and the karma what is that karma the karma means there it means the yaga yagya karma the activity with some desire but the when without desire the activity that activity purify our mind and that is add it over here so these two paths now according to bhagavan sri ramakrishna both both are leading to the same goal and that is oneness everything is god or everything is brahman so this is the now let us read the original and where the lord said like this vijay is asking how sir can one have the vision of the primal energy and attain brahma gyana the knowledge of the attributeless brahman attributeless brahman those who are new are the vedanta students so brahman are two types always they say one is with attribute another without attribute attribute means the guna the what is the guna the quality satya rajatama the brahman with that activity the satya rajatama the gunas when not working at all that is called nirguna brahma in sanskrit terminology ni guna without the quality but it is there dormant not manifested not active but it is already there without that it was not there it has been created no it is not possible everything yes everything is already there nothing new can happen that is the conception then it happens to the one and what is who is that one we call brahman so this brahman which is having everything so it is also having the qualities but dormant inactive called nirguna brahma and when those qualities are active called saguna brahma or god the saguna brahma is god nirguna brahma is brahman paramatma like that now the question is primal energy that means the saguna activity is there with the qualities energy means the activity and the primal energy the activity of the god and through that 
can we attain the Brahma Jnana? And then he explained the what is that Brahma Jnana? Suppose Saguna and Nirguna. If we have the Saguna Brahma Jnana, that is also Brahma Jnana. But Vijay Krishna Goswami wants to know can we through the activity, through the dualism, through the worship and devotion, can reach to the Brahma Jnana attributeless Brahman. These Brahmans are attributeless. Now the reply of the Master. The Master, he said, pray to him with a yearning heart. Look at it. Now we like to know the attributeless Brahman. But the Sri Ramakrishna's advice is, pray to him, it's not eat. Usually the Brahman is mentioned as eat, tad. Now here he said him, him means that God, he means that God with yearning heart and weep. That will purify your heart. You will see the reflection of the sun in the clear water. In the mirror of his eye consciousness, the devotee sees the form of the primal energy, Brahman with attributes. But the mirror must be wiped clean. One does not see the right reflection if there is any dirt on the mirror. Sri Ramakrishna is telling, if you are praying to the Him, the God, then you will see that God himself reflected in the eye consciousness. Then he is telling, as long as a man must see the sun in the water of his eye consciousness and has no other means of seeing it, it is not God or him or mother, it is it. As long as a man must see the sun in the water of his eye consciousness, I am meditating the duality. Who is this I? So I am meditating means that reflection, I am meditating as long as no means of seeing the real sun except through its reflection, so long is the reflected sun alone 100% real to him. As long as the I is real, so long is the reflected sun real, 100%. That reflected sun is nothing but the primal energy. First, he gave the answer. You cannot go beyond when there is a conception of I, I am praying, I am meditating, I am practicing spirituality. This I means duality. So obviously you have to, because there is no other means. You have not developed that. Obviously you have to reflect that on your I consciousness and you are praying to that, concentrating on that, and that is called primal energy or the God with attribute, the Brahman with attribute. Next he says, but if you seek Brahma Jnana, the knowledge of the attribute less Brahman, then proceed to the real sun through its reflection. That's why the, I say the Panchama Veda, the gospel is the Panchama Veda. It gives the knowledge. Sometimes some people, uh, they are emotional. They don't say, why you should say uh, Panchama Veda, uh, etc. Panchama Veda, Veda means knowledge. And this knowledge, the highest knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, is so clearly so simply is given by Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Can't we say that it is the Veda? The gospel is Veda, the full of knowledge, every page. 
So this here he says, if you think that I am meditating, I am praying, as long as that I consciousness will be there, there is no other option but to pray to the Brahman or the primal energy or the God which is with attribute. The Brahman with attribute that you have to pray and that is your goal as long as I is there. Now if you want to know the Brahman without attribute, <coughs> Then he said, the real son, there also you have to go through the reflected son. That Jesus said, those who have seen the son have seen the father. And it is said, if you have seen the avatara, you have seen the God. So that is the reflected sound. Each and every quality of that Supreme Brahman is manifested through that. That is called the avatara, or in the Christian tradition, you say the son. The son and the father, avatara and the Brahman or the God, the Supreme God. Pray to Brahman with attributes. Look at it. Pray to Brahman with attributes. That means the God who listens to your prayers and he himself will give you full knowledge of Brahman. For that which is Brahman with attribute is verily Brahman without attributes. That which is Brahman is verily Shakti. One realizes this non-duality after the attainment of perfect knowledge. So where is the difference? Difference is our ego. And sometimes we feel that, no, I should practice the, like the, again and again, the Vijay Krishna Goswami Ji, he was telling, because that time he was young and he was feeling that we should know the Brahman without attribute. But how can you? Before that, you have to have the preparation. Without the preparation, you cannot do that. Completely, you have to abolish the I-ness. Is it so easy? The Sri Ramakrishna is a practical master. So he is giving. So theory is one thing. But when he is trying to guide us, he is gui guiding in this way, you will reach over there but that is the hardest path. This is the easiest way you go through the duality. And then that duality will take you to the non-duality. Now friends, I will quote from some of the scriptures in support of this. But before that, if you remember what happened in the life of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, when he was practicing intensely and his whole mind was focused on only one thing I like to realize God and his God was Goddess Kali and she he was telling calling mother and the last day he came and told it is unbearable pain I cannot do anything else I cannot think anything else but you mother you must reveal thyself to me this moment, not this day, this moment. When the prayer was that, mind intensity was that, then he took up the sword from the hand of the goddess Kali, that image in Dakshinishya, and was ready to cut his head. Because without the revelation of the truth, without seeing face to face with the God I am praying for so many years. It is of no use leaving. That was the mental condition. Then immediately the revelation came. What he saw? He was praying to the goddess Kali, the God with attribute, with image. But when the revelation came, the knowledge dawned he saw only the light and nothing else, no images. 
So that his experience, that final ex spiritual experience in that path, so through duality, he is to the non-duality, completely one and there is nothing. In the expression, because he cannot express the knowledge of the Brahman. But he told it is just the light, knowledge, 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 the light everywhere. And the waves after waves, the light came and I was submerged into that, each and everything. This temple, this whole locality, myself, the sky, the earth, nothing remained there. Everything vanished into that light, lighter knowledge. So when we read the life of Sri Ramakrishna and we read the scripture, we can understand it is possible. And when he is telling, after experiencing that, only he is instructing us. Not that he is propagating the duality, and not that he is prop uh, not asking people to follow the path of knowledge, not like that. Reality. We are remaining in this duality. We feel hungry, we eat, I am hungry, I am sleepy, I like to do this, I like to go there. Everything I is there, connected with this, unless and until this I goes away, is it possible? So he is telling like that. And Vedanta Sutra, Brahma Sutra, it says, Bikara Bharticha Tathahi Sthitim Ahu. Vedanta Sutra 4.4.19 It says, Bikara Bharticha Tathahi Sthitim Ahu. God is immanent and also transcendent. Bikara. Bikara means manifested. So both are there, immanent and transcendent. Bhagavat, it is also 2.6.31, Bhagavat say, Grihitam Maya Ruguna Sargadava Guna Swataha. Grihita accepting maya ru guna the guna the qualities of the maya what are the qualities of the maya i said many times many of you can remember it is the sattva raja tama the qualities and two powers that is covering the original and superimposing something new on that so that is called maya two power and three qualities. And this Maya is the power of God. So he adopted the quality of the Maya. Grihita, Maya Ruguna, Sargadaba Guna, Swataha. And this reality came. Though in reality it has no form, through its own Maya, the creation came. So this is the one thing that is manifested and the same from many we are trying to go back to one. From one many has come. Now from many we like to go back to the one. So the back calculation we are going. Important thing is this, all our philosophy they are fighting that it cannot be. The knowledge is completely different and devotion is completely different. But Sri Ramakrishna is the God of combination, is the God of Samanaya. And he is showing these and so perfectly he is showing. It is possible. And this is n not that his own revelation. It is supported by the scriptures also. Yoga Vashishta, it says, Prati Bhashata Evedam Jagat Na Paramarthataha. This Jagat, it Prati Bhashita reflected. It is not Paramarthata, it is not real. But as long as I consciousness is there, as Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, we cannot see the real. I am already here submerged with this. Well, how can I say? 
So sometimes those who know the swimming, if you have dived deep into the water and then look up, you can see the sun. And mainly those who are divers, they go deep into the water in the ocean, that they always try to see that there is a light above and they come to that light. So same way, we are in the dark, we are in ignorance. We are thinking there are so many. We are thinking that I am dying, I am taking birth, I am enjoying, I am suffering, so many. And that I, who is full of ego, who is separate from God, if I say that I am Brahman, that will be the hypocrisy. You can say, anyone can say. But that saying won't help because that realization is necessary. The Brahman means only the conception of one and never two. And that through two we are going to the one. How? First, there are so many things, including me, in this world. And varieties. And there, different type of attractions are there. The attractions and the encounter, uh, the attraction is goes on, the action, reactions, I am in that. Constantly moving like this on the waves. Now what should I do? My goal will be the reflected sun. I catch the reflected sun. So I can forget everything. And the reflected sun is the avatar. Reflected sun is that unique personality who is showing the love, who is showing the sympathy, who is showing the oneness, service, everything, all best qualities that the human brain can imagine, all is present over there. Now I catch that and try to imbibe those qualities and slowly, as they call it, purification of the mind. What is the puri purification? I am giving out, cleaning many from my mind and keeping only one, that reflected sun. And that reflection is my goal. And that is the God. And when I reach that, then I take that reflected God and go directly to the original sun, that is the Paramatma. So this is the, now even one can say, well, both the paths are not same. But this process, if we follow through duality to non-duality, it will be easy for us. That is what Sri Ramakrishna is telling. Pratibhashita evedam jagat, reflected. That is true. Yoga Vashishta, we are studying Yoga Vashishta every Sunday. We will come to all this. This is reflected, no doubt. But do we feel that this is reflected? This moment? No. So what we should try to do? We should understand that and prepare our, our mind. How? Through Sraddha. What is that Sraddha? Complete faith in the words of the scripture. And what is that scripture? Yoga Vashishta, Veda, Upanishad. It says these again and again, that from one everything has come. If that is so, why should I not accept this also? And if I accept these and that manifestation of the one, I see one in every. So that is the way. So one is negative, neti, neti, not this, not this. And everything that comes before you, you have to say, no, no. But there is another path, iti iti. Uh, this is that same Brahman manifested as a beggar. This is the same Brahman manifested as this, as that. Each and everything, I see the one in many. So this is the path Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling it will be easy. Friends, we find that in different places it says, in the Prasna Upanishad particularly, it says, Ishahi Drashta, Sprashta, Srota, Grata, Rasaita, 
मंता बुद्धा कर्ता विज्ञानात्मा पुरुष स परे अक्षरे आत्मनि संप्रतिष्ठे इन द प्रश्नोपने चे सेज द मार्शी पीपल आर एंड द गार्ग दे वेर एविंग दिस कन्वर्सेशन द दिस ऑल दिस दैट वी फाइन इज अ दस्ता इट सीज इस श्रोता इट हीर्स इस मेलिंग and he's tasting he's thinking he's understanding and also feeling i that i am doing karta sa pare akshare atmani sampratishte but ultimately it is on that full consciousness this is the prashna upanishad and it says the fourth chapter ninth verse is gives this so this is the way we can reach over there that is exactly what bhagwan sri ramakrishna is guiding us in the question that the, he asks the vijay krishna goshami and sri ramakrishna said yes it is possible but this is the way you have to try the divine mother gives her devotee brahma gyana to i have given the title of today's discussion divine mother gives brahma gyana to this brahma gyana the knowledge of the oneness that also can come through the divine mother the duality the brahma gyana to but a true lover of god generally does not seek the knowledge of brahman now there is another mood a different mood true lover of god so why i like to enjoy the play he understood everything that the same consciousness that is brahman manifested as god the brahman with attributes and then becoming the tree and also becoming a naughty boy climbing on the tree plucking the flower fruits and the flowers and also the owner of the tree chasing the boy everything is going on as the owner of the tree is different tree is different than the naughty boy also different no this is all same but the game is going on and if you know it you enjoy it that is the thing you very nicely enjoy <coughs> those who are observing the drama in in that uh, village and if uh, they they feel ah oh, the oh, so many villagers they are they are acting in different characters now one person is dying the unknown people may feel oh my god this person is dying but those his friends they know that it's not it is a drama this moment he is not dying it will be all right afterwards maybe hardly one hour and he'll be all right so that the pain is not there that is called knowledge if i have the knowledge that this is not in reality happening then i am not getting the pain or pleasure i am remaining the same in everything because i know those who are not knowing it when they see the man is dying they will think oh my god the man is dying over there and the other person is killing him they will think that he must be arrested must be punished but those who know the whole thing they will feel oh this is the drama actually it is not thing happening so who, who is a brahma gyani the brahma gyani knows that all these things are happening in reality it is not just like the drama so their reactions are completely different so this is the only difference what is knowledge understanding the reality of the thing and naturally understanding that nothing in reality happening the reaction will be completely different so in pain or in pleasure in losing losing 
or in gain, both will be, all will be the same. Sri Ramakrishna, he is telling, pray to the Divine Mother and he will give you the Brahma Jnana. There is another path, the path of knowledge, which is very difficult. He is now mentioning for the path of knowledge. This is through devotion. You are going to the Brahma Jnana. But the pure path of knowledge, where you are not taking the help of devotion, help of the path of devotion, the pure knowledge. What is, but it is very difficult. In Bhagavad Gita also, it says it is very difficult. You members of the Brahma Samaj are not Ganis. Now he says that. Last time we read uh, all this, then these passages. Now we are again we are discussing because to explain this part particularly, this is very very essential. Pure path of knowledge, if we take, there you have to give everything. This is not. This is not. This is not. This is not real. This is not real. This is not real. When even if something happened to your body, you are feeling pain, you have to say, no, nothing is happening. Is the body is only suffering. I am all right. This is the path of the jnana. Not that it is not possible, it is possible. And some of the disciples of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna in their lives, those who have read that, they you will understand. Swami Turiyanandaji Maharaj, on the back, he was having the carbon call, and that was operated without any anesthesia. He simply said to the doctor, please allow me two minutes. I will withdraw the mind from my body, and then you do that. He just took out the mind from his body. Yes, just like a miracle. But that is true. And doctor operated, and he showed no pain, no sign of pain. Can you imagine? That is the path of knowledge. But I say that I am following the path of knowledge. And the moment somebody says something, immediately I reacted. Why you are insulting me? Why you are not satisfying my desires? And at the same time, that is called hypocrisy. One should be very, very careful about that. And in the path of devotion, through devotion to the path of knowledge, I want to see you with this form and without form. God, please reveal thyself like that. God will do that because he is both. God is our inner controller. Pray to him with a pure and guileless heart. Which is purity again? The purity means unselfishness. There is no selfish motive. Oh God, Please give me, the one lady came to Ma Sharadamani Devi and she was requesting, praying to the mother, Mother, please bless so that my husband gets uh, the good income. The mother told, what your husband is doing? What is his profession? Oh, he is a medical doctor. Mother told, how can I pray then? My daughter, I cannot pray like that. If I pray that your husband gets a lot of money means many people will become sick and they will come to your husband and then they will earn. How can I pray like that? So that is not that. So we have to understand what I am going to pray. And this it says very clearly with a pure and guileless heart. I am praying in such a way that the, the this is called one person, again Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, one person was praying to God, Oh God, I don't need anything, except please fulfill my one desire. I like to eat on a golden plate with my grandson. The grandson means I am going to leave. His own son is young. Now that son will grow and then marry, then the grandson. That means this man is going to live for a long time first. Give me the, the blessing so that I can eat with that grandson in a golden plate. That means I must be rich. Otherwise on the gold plate. So that is called the 
tricky way of praying to God. Sri Ramakrishna said, no, guileless, simple, just go and pray. And you see, the prayer will be answered for sure. Sometimes something happened and we think that why God is not listening. That was supposed to happen. So that is not possible to control. So that is, that was the, the person who is supposed to die. That was the ultimate time for him. He will die. Most of the time, but sometimes God also saved like that. It says in this way, He will explain everything to you. Give up egotism and take refuge in Him. The ahamkara, the ego that separates us from the God. You will realize everything. Then He, he sang a song. You know, to explain His teaching, Sri Ramakrishna either is to tell a story or is to sing songs and he continued when you mix with people outside your samaj this is also very important for all the groups of the spiritual uh, the groups samaj means a, a group of people a clan and Sri Ramakrishna is asking when you mix with people outside your samaj love them all this is spiritual teacher. Unless and until you can love all, you cannot realize God because God is all. The other groups, spiritual groups, religious groups, vying with each other, criticizing each other. But you cannot realize God in that way. So that is what Sri Ramakrishna said. When in their company, be one of them. Don't harbor malice toward them. Don't turn up your nose in hatred and say, Oh, this man believes in God with form and not in the formless God. That man believes in the formless God and not in God with form. This man is a Christian. This man is a Hindu and this man is a Muslim. It is God alone who makes people see things in different ways. Know that people have different natures. Realize this and mix with them as much as you can and love all, but enter your own inner chamber to enjoy peace and bliss. And this is called the Parliament of Religion. We are constantly different religious groups, particularly in America. The, they always try to have, in almost everywhere in Ramakrishna, the Vedanta societies, the branches of the Ramakrishna mission here in America and Europe, they always try to propagate this brotherhood. So that is the idea of the, our, our mission is that each path a valid path. And if you are taking up one path, follow that sincerely, genuinely. Only thing, do not criticize others. Do not disturb others, put hindrance on others. So this is the only way if you can do, then you will reach God. That is what Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna says. So this combination is wonderful. And in the modern times, this is the only way. We cannot go and kill people and force them to and convert them into our faith. It is not possible. In medieval age, some people, they thought like that. And the kings also joined the fray. And then they were taking the help of the so-called religious people. And they used to go to village to village, hamlets to hamlets, killing people and torturing them, converting them into their own faith. They are thinking that they are serving God. Is it true? No. The same people are surviving, leaving, and their numbers are also increasing. Nothing happened. Now that is the reason, if you read the lecture Shami Vivekananda gave on the 27th September, 
We all know about the 11th September, 27th September 1893 in Chicago, the concluding talk, the Bibeka and the Gay, the, he said like this. And that is the reason we are also trying, as because we are the followers of Vivekananda. We fervently try to bring all our religious brothers together. Follow your path. Stick to that. Love your ideology. But only don't criticize others and hate others that much. So this ideology, this idea, when it goes out and reaches to that particular group of people, so the Hindus are also telling the same thing, Muslims and Christians and the Buddhists, Jains, Sheikhs. If they all talk like that, different followers of different sects and or different ideologies, but they all are ready to love each other. What will happen? And what is this society? Our political leaders, our social leaders, our reformers, our administrators, all are coming from this society only. So when we grow into this society, which teaches us to mingle with each other, understanding each other, loving each other, not to criticize each other, think of that condition. Swami Vivekananda dreamed of that. We like to go beyond the Quran, the Bible, the Tipitaka, the Veda, and we should love each other, understand each other. Not that we like to change anyone. That is exactly what Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling. When you mix with people outside your Samaj, love them all. Realize this and mix with them as much as you can and love all. But enter your own inner chamber to enjoy peace and please. I have grown, I have grown up in one ideology. So when I come back to my own room and close my door and I meditate and pray to my God, I get solace, my God. So I get the solace there. I need not to force on my mind the somebody else God. No. Why should I? Because I love my own God. So this, the unique way, Sri Ramakrishna, that is called, is not the mixing, unity in diversity. The diverse forms will be there, different forms will be there, thoughts will be there, practices will be there. But we are united, why? Because we are going to the same God, and this God is nothing but love, nothing but purity. Nothing but unselfishness. So when we reach over there, we'll see nothing but the love. With a hatredful mind, can I reach over there? Can God will allow me to go there? It is impossible, absurd. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling, mix with all, as if you are their own. But when you come back to your own self and in your own chamber, Go and pray according to your love, your liking. Lighting the lamp of knowledge in the chamber of your heart, behold the face of the mother, the Brahman's embodiment. The Brahman embodiment, mother. That is, that Sri Ramakrishna is telling, through the mother, you are going to the Brahman. The embodiment of Brahman manifested through the mother. You can see your true self only within your own chamber. The cowherds take the cows to graze in the pastures. They are the cattle mix. They all form one herd. But one, but on returning to their sheds in the evening, they are separated. Beautifully, he is explaining the different the cowboys, they are taking their own herds and they are letting all the cows to graze in one big field. So the one A, B, C, D, all their cows are now mixed into that. Then afterwards, when the evening approaches, 
when they come back and go to their own respective shades, they are, they are separate. The sum is worshipping Kali, Durga, or Ganesha, or the Sri Ramakrishna, or Jesus, or Buddha. But when you are mixing in the society, we are all same. But when we separate, we go back to our own shades, back to our own temples, back to our own faith. There we practice, there we pray according to our temperament, our likings and our love. So it is, it's teaching in this way. Therefore, I say, dwell by yourself in your own chamber. It was 10 o'clock in the evening. The master got into a car carriage to return to Dakshinesha. One or two attending devotees got in with him. The carriage stood under a tree in deep darkness. Bani Pal wanted to send some sweets and other food with Sri Ramakrishna for Rakhal and the master's nephew. Bani Pal said, Rakhal was not here this evening. Rakhal, afterwards Swami Brahmananda, he used to stay with Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Ramakrishna's nephew also used to stay with Sri Ramakrishna. So naturally, he used to, they used to visit with Sri Ramakrishna to different devotees' houses. They used to eat over there now, as because they too have not come, Bani Pal, the devotee, wants to give some food and sweets for them. With your permission, I should like to send some sweets for him by your attendance, Master, with great anxiety. Oh, Bani Pal, oh, sir, please don't send these things with me. That will do me harm. It is never possible for me to lay up anything. I hope you won't mind. So that is, I cannot carry, I cannot take. That is the purest of the pure mentality of the monks. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he was the Paramahamsa. He was the highest, that spiritual mind. For him, even little this thing, it is not possible. It is not possible. For us, we carry. When you go to some devotee's house, and if they like to give uh, some leftover, they prepare it for us. And they say, the Swamiji, you can take it, but some of the other monastic brothers are there. I bring it. Sometimes other devotees also come, I distribute them, give them. So why? Because I feel the mother is giving to me, so I am bringing. But Thakur, he is showing us the ideal, the completely highest ideal. So we should not mix it up, we should not misunderstand it. But Thakur said, these are you people are carrying, why are you are we taking? Not like that. We bring it to Thakur only, we go over there, eat and pray to Thakur for their benefit. But when you bring the food in the same manner, we bring. So that is the Banipal said, don't do it. Banipal, as you please, sir, please give me your blessings. Then the master, oh, we have been very happy today. You see, he alone is a true man who has made money his servant. The Banipal was a rich man. Then what he did, he invited devotees, arranged their food, and arranged that spiritual discourse through Swami, our Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. <coughs> Naturally, Sri Ramakrishna was very happy. And Sri Ramakrishna means God. God was happy. Can you imagine? The God was happy because he saw he spent the money for the good reason. So many people came, they heard, many of them will be remembering this thing, uh, all the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna. And slowly, slowly, their mind will be purified, the mind will be directed towards God, 
and all these blessings will go to the Benipal. So your money, I'm very happy they made the money his servant. But those who do not know the use of money are not mean even though they have human forms. So some people, they are so rich, fabulously rich. And constantly they are thinking that when I am going to be in the list of the seven richest person, and I should be, oh, I am in the sixth position, I should be on the third, I should be the first, competition. And for that, they are not paying properly, not these, not that, somehow what they're going to do with that. Next year, or people will forget, the majority of the people, the billions and billions of people, they do not know who is the richest man in this world. Only a handful they will be knowing. And those richest people, they are circle is that much. And they are thinking we are, that all people know about me. Nobody knows. And what you are going to do with that money? And can't we uh, see the, what happened to the, those kings? They went and grabbed the, the land after land and the, they plundered, they killed people. After that, what? Nowhere. Somewhere in the pages of the history, their names are there. And notorious people, notorious kings. So when we learn, when we will learn that everything is temporary, uh, but recently I read one million year he has given all properties in charity and he said I am so happy that I have become again ordinary person before my death again I am an ordinary person I can mix with all people and I can live very simple humble way that should be the attitude. If you have the capacity, earn, and then give it back to the society. I saw one, someone has saying, they said, there is a disease, and the disease has a medicine also. But the rich people don't understand that. The disease is called hunger, and the medicine is food. But the rich people don't know it because they never failed hunger. That is true. I have seen. So that's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling, utilize your money for the good of many, for good of all. They may have human bodies, but they behave like animals. You are blessed indeed, the Banipal, you have made so many devotees happy today. Friends, thank you for attending this. And we have learned that Brahma Jnana is possible through the path of devotion also. Because there is only one, and that is the Brahman. And the Brahman has become, using his attributes, as we have quoted from the Bhagavata and the other scriptures, the same one has become many. So if we are going, seeing the many as one, we go back to Brahman. And then if we have the true devotion, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, even the God, the mother, will show you what is Brahma Jnana, and you will realize Brahm, have that. And second he said, all six, all the philosophies, all the paths are leading to the same goal. So do not quarrel, mix with all others, each other. But when you go back to your own chamber, practice your own way. This is a unique teaching. And then finally, he gave us today that try to help others, those who are not having the food or shelter or clothing. The winter is approaching. Thousands of people, they will be suffering without the warm clothes. The, in Africa and other places, 
the UNESCO and the organizations, they are telling that this many people is going to die without food. So those who are rich, if they can afford, if they can organize the food, that will be the greatest blessings they will receive from God. So there these three things today we have learned. So let us see if there is any question. So the first question is from Tuhin. Uh, the question is how karma and bhakti go side by side to achieve Brahman. Question from Tuhin. Mm. Karma means unselfish work. And when you are doing work without any expectation, why you will be doing that? So naturally, there will be a love, the devotion. So I am doing it, feeding the poor people, helping the poor people, giving them medicines and clothing, because they are also the different forms of God that I love. So the karma and bhakti goes together by this way. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Tuhin. Let us conclude. Niranjanam nityam anantarupam bhaktanukampa dhrita bigraham bai ishavataram paramishamidyam tam ramakrishnam Shirasa Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu Mm-hmm.